first this hour. Portugal's ruling socialists are on track to win the most votes in this uh, snap parliamentary election. Exit polls show that they could even reach an outright majority, but even if they don't, the combined left likely will. The snap vote was called back in November after Prime Minister Antonio Costa's hard left allies joined the right to strike down his minority government's budget. Costa will now get a new chance at forming a government and approving the 2022 spending plan. Well, France 24's correspondent Sarah Morris joins us live. Sarah, exit polls show that Prime Minister Antonio Costa fared much better than expected. Yes, if these uh, exit polls are to be believed, uh, uh, the Socialist uh, Party has come on 37.5% to 42.5% of the vote. Uh, that would potentially give them between 100 and 117 deputies in the Portuguese parliament. You'll remember that the majority is 116. And so in the best case scenario, uh, Costa has an absolute majority and he could uh, free himself of the far-left uh, allies uh, that he has relied upon as a minority government. Uh, the distance in these exit polls also between his largest rival, the PSD, uh, the centre-right party, uh, looks between... They are polling 26.7 to 31.7 per cent. Uh, so the, dis the, the distance with the socialists uh, would certainly allow Antonio Costa uh, to say uh, that he is the natural uh, person to remain in power. Uh, the big question is, can he reach that absolute majority? Uh, the votes, of course, are still being counted, and uh, they give uh, the exit poll is giving Chega, uh, that far right party, uh, between 4.5 and 8.5 uh, percent. If if uh, that is confirmed, if Chigger can squeak in at third place, uh, they might uh, uh, be able to become uh, the kingmaker again, depending on whether that magic number of 116 seats is uh, reached uh, for anyone. But obviously, if it was Costa, Costa has already ruled out uh, taking any backing uh, from the far right party. Now, you mentioned that Chega, uh, the far right party, uh, coming in at around uh, 8%, taking about 8% of the vote. Uh, they're now in third place. I mean, what does this say about Portugal and Portuguese voters? Well, previously, uh, people used to look, analysts used to look at Portugal and say it was one of the few European countries that did not have a populist, a far-right uh, party with any uh, strength in the parliament. And uh, if these uh, results are confirmed, uh, then uh, it looks as if uh, André Ventura, that one-man band uh, for uh, Chega, which means enough, it looks as if he's managed to whip up and tap into some kind of discontent, uh, disenchantment among Portuguese voters. Uh, many of them talking to me in the campaign, uh, or, or in the election uh, campaign, uh, said to me they did feel that they had been uh, failed uh, by uh, the previous parties. They were uh, fed up of, uh, of uh, extremely low wages, minimum wages and average wages. And uh, maybe that has helped uh, the Chega party tap into some kind of uh, discontentment uh, to, to tell voters uh, that uh, they are getting a raw deal from the mainstream uh, political parties. Uh, we know that uh, Ventura is an ex-football uh, pundit. He is somebody used to uh, being belligerent on the TV. And uh, he's promised a lot of different things to different people. His messages continually changed. And uh, lots of his rivals said that he was uh, somebody who was aggressive on uh, the TV uh, screens. Uh, that he had no real policies and that he's only in uh, politics uh, for himself. Uh, again, we'll have to see if these uh, results are confirmed and whether uh, he can gain any kind of, of power. Of course, uh, uh, at the moment, all the political parties ruling out doing deals or letting uh, um, Chega into government. OK, Sarah Morris, thank you very much for that update there.